Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be a continuation of our series on Access SQL or SQL. More specifically, today we're going to be talking about how to add rows of information to a table that don't already exist. And this is a very common problem and a common issue that you will be running into where you want to make sure that the rows of information that you're inserting into your table don't already exist in the table. So let's go ahead and back out and go into our database here. And here we've got our insert into query that goes ahead and uh, you know was going to insert that information into our table one temp table. So I went ahead and deleted all those other addresses that we had, all those duplicates. So we're just back to our original three fields here, or uh, sorry, our original three rows. But what I've done is I've also added a new row to our table one addresses, okay? And that now causes our query to return four results. And now what we probably want to do is, since we've got this new result here, we've got this new uh, value in here, we want to add just that one value to the table one temp, because we don't want to have the duplicates again, right? We just want to get this one hyphenated corp entry and add it to the table one temp table. So how do you do that? How do you avoid duplicating the information using the same query. What can you do to kind of filter out those three results in our query that already exist in our table one temp? Well, it's a bit tricky. It's not a straightforward answer. Uh, and I'm going to have to follow, you're going to have to really follow along and make sure that you've seen some of the old videos because we're going to be employing some of the other techniques that we've already learned up to this point in order to do this. So if you've not seen those videos yet, especially with the subqueries, I urge you to go ahead and do so right now. Otherwise, the rest of you who have already seen those things, we're going to go ahead and get to work here. So I'm going to go into the SQL view here. And I'm actually going to open up my original query, query one, which has uh, the original make table query. And I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to make a new query. So let's go ahead and create a new query here. And let's paste that make table query back into our new query. And I'm going to drop that into statement. But I'm going to also grab the insert into statement from our query two, just to kind of cut out some of the excess work. I could type this all out if I wanted to, but I'm just going to try to make things a little bit quicker here. And then I need to add in my address type, because remember, we dropped that off at the end of the video of, of our last video. So we've got customer name matches up to customer name and address type matches up to address type and attention, etc. So we're good to go there. Okay, so there's the select statement that would cause duplicate values to be added to our table one temp. So what we need to do is we need to, as part of our select statement, we need to filter out all of those results that already exist so that we only have this one that's returned. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make this whole query here its own subquery, and I'm going to call it as SQ1. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to left join it to the table that were that already exists. So we're going to left join to table one temp. Okay. So what we're doing is we're going to join that query that returns those four results to the one that currently only has the three results, to the table that already exists, okay? But we need to make sure that we are, uh, we are going to get the appropriate linkage here be on, our, on our join statement, because uh, if you look at our table one temp and even the query, you can see we've got Metro properties listed in here twice. However, there is a difference when you look uh, at the customer name and the address type, because if you look here, Metro Properties has a different has a bill to and it has an office. And hopefully you shouldn't have in this table one temp duplicate entries, right? We're trying to avoid that. We don't want two Metro Properties offices. We only want to have the one each. So we can assume, we can safely assume that each row will be uniquely identified 
by its customer name and its address type, and that there will not be any two rows that will have the same two values in those two fields. So that those two fields are what make that particular row unique. Because of that, I can use that as my join statement. So I'm going to say on sq1 customer name equals table one oops table one temp customer name so I'm joining on the customer name and I'm also joining on sq1 dot address type is equal to table one temp address type okay so what we're essentially doing here is we're, we're joining the query that I've aliased as SQ1 that gives us this these four results and I'm joining that to the table one temp which has only the three results right now I do need to add my select statement here in my uh, uh, in front of my from so let's go ahead and do SQ1 customer name and SQ1 address type SQ1 uh, it was attention and then we have SQ1 address SQ1 city SQ1 state and SQ1 zip okay so those are my select values that are going to re be returning from our query because again we need to be looking at the values that because the, the value that we want to add to table one temp exists in this SQ1 query right this query returns four results and one of those results is the one that we want to return so we need to make sure we're pulling the values from SQ1 since that's the uh, that's where that row exists okay now if I just take this right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna make a new query just to show you guys the results here if I view this we have the four rows, one of which is the hyphenated corp, right? So again, I'm just doing my select statement of my SQ1, where those, uh, and, and it's going to give me back all four rows. However, since we are doing a left join, we're returning all of the rows from SQ1 and only the rows from table one temp where these values coexist, right? So if I change this left join to inner join, I just want to show you this. You'll see we only get the three rows, right? The three rows where those values are equal because those are the same three rows that already exist in table one temp. So what we can do here is turn this back into a left join, but we're going to filter our results where table one temp customer name e is null what we're saying here now is show me the one or show me the results okay of our left join statement where customer name is null from table one temp so since that one result doesn't exist yet in table one temp it's going to return back as null and now what we're going to get is just the one value from our select statement that returns back that doesn't exist yet in the table one temp and because it doesn't exist yet in table one temp when I ask to see its customer name from table one temp it's going to say there's nothing there there's it's it's null and now what we get is the one result we have one value one row and that's the one row that doesn't currently exist in the table one temp and now we can use this query as our insert query 
to make sure that we add just the one row and insert it into our table one temp table. So that's going to just give us the one row just to make sure. Let me go back here, oops, uh, go back to our SQL view. And if I run it, it's gonna only append one row. Click yes, and there we go. Now if I close my temp table, because I gotta reopen it here, we should see no duplication. Sure enough, there we go. There's our one row that we added because it didn't exist, okay? So there is how you can filter your results using the left join statement, or it could be a right join statement, depending upon which side of the, uh, of the join you wanna put your, your query in your table. But in this case, we did a left join, and we're getting all of the results from SQL 1 and all of the results from table 1 temp, but I'm filtering it with the where clause to only show me where customer name is null in the table 1 temp, and there you go. That's how you get the one, res one result returned that doesn't already exist in table 1 temp. All right, I know that's a pretty complex series of events. I strongly urge you to go back and rewatch this video if you got confused at any part of it. It's very difficult to understand in a lot of cases. So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments section of this video, and I'll do everything I can to help sort things out for you, okay? Thank you so much.